Good morning, my soccer universe. Let's talk first semi-final of the Women's World Cup played in Lyon to meet England and the United States. By now you probably know the results. The States moved on to the final, hence I'm wearing my um, 2013 uh, centenary jersey. However, the US did not play in white. The match of all had England as home team, so England played at home in white, the US in red with blue socks. Honestly, I was hoping that it will that the fixture was reversed, that the US play in white and England plays in red. I think it would have been a nicer matchup. Not that I dislike the US jerseys, but I looked a little bit too generic, although the jersey itself is nothing but generic. But more on that, of course, in my jersey review on both of these um, nations. Uh, the game starts out like every US women's game uh, at this World Cup with the US pressing forward and having chances. They had an early chance already, I think, in the fourth uh, minute. Um, and yeah, uh, the, I should first say the big news was that Megan Rapino, who was the star in the first uh, previous two games, did not even play, did not even warm up. So uh, that was kind of surprising to not have her in there. Probably there was an injury. We, uh, as of now, I don't know what actually happened. Uh, maybe we'll get to know more. Uh, if not, I will put here uh, a little um, info. So for her, uh, press uh, played in the attack and actually that's uh, played uh, paid early dividends because uh, there was a um, cross come coming in in the 10th minute and press can head it in um, almost unopposed. I, I I have to say that I didn't like the English defending there. I think this uh, this header could have been better defended and there's no way that um, uh, she actually makes it there. But yeah, she gets uh, the goal and kind of, uh, ju not justifies, but you know, makes up for uh, Megan Rampino not being there. Um, and Already in these early stages, I, I thought that the US is really stifling England. But England, and this was the big uh, lesson from this game, England was super efficient going forward and quickly could hit, uh, could, could come to chances to uh, almost out of nowhere. And that's how the equalizer came. Um, uh, again, cross from the left, and Ellen White puts it into the 19th. It's 1 1, game on. And uh, was a little bit surprising at this point, but on the other side, uh, made for an open game. And then it was England who actually put uh, the US under pressure. It was this game was so weird that there were always these momentum shifts in there, where uh, there was short phases uh, of English dominance over the, over, over this, followed by uh, phases where I thought that the US is completely stifling England. And now it was England's turn, and they really. Uh, put the US a little bit under pressure and you could see that the US is vulnerable at the back if properly pressed. However, um, England just couldn't get uh, the breakthrough and it was then uh, the, uh, the relief attack uh, that again it was nicely played. Cross comes in and this time I think this is really hard to defend. Alex Morgan on her 30th birthday had it in to make it 2-1 for the States. Uh, that's also how it went in, into the half. I think it was an overall deserved lead. It was a very intense match. It was a good match to uh, watch. I don't know. I And maybe it was the perspective because the, um, it was really high up. I always had the feeling that so far the women's work of the camera was lower. And there, therefore, it's um, even small movements um, seemed faster here. I always had the feeling that... Uh, I could see the intensity in the game, but it was not the speed, this, um, you know, the France-US game. I always had the feeling that there was a lot of back and forth, although France was not as dangerous as England was. I mean, England, uh, what's impressed me is that out of very little, they make a whole lot. That was really uh, what, what impressed me personally. Second half starts very similar to the first one with the US having prolonged uh, possession and really stifling England. And 
I have to admit I fell asleep at halftime and I think I slept until the around 56th, 57th minute. Um, yeah, I didn't. I had everything on, but I was just dead asleep. It has been, as I said uh, yesterday, it has been a rough few days. Um, but I thought at that point England doesn't even get out of their own half. And then uh, out of nowhere, a quick passing move. Uh, um, again, Ellen White clear on goal, takes a shot, and it is 2 2. Uh, would have been her seventh goal. However, if she was just by a hair of sight. And I think this was, yeah, probably uh, the right, this, no, it's not, it was the right call. Uh, it just, um, you know, would have made the game a little bit more interesting. On the other side, I was a little bit relieved. I was really hoping this is not going to overtime. Um, I might not have watched all, all, all over time, to be honest. But then, from that moment on, which was, I think, around 65th minute, I don't know now exactly. At this point, um, she uh, England really put the pressure and tried to get an equalizer. And over an attack, uh, Ellen White is brought down in the box. I mean, a really nice cross um, com coming, I think it was over Paris. Um, that you think uh, Ellen White is not clear in goal, this will be the 2-2, but she's stripped up. They have to look at it on uh, VAR, because I think during, the, uh, if you see the first replay, you would say, no, there's nothing. Uh, it's this kind of penalty that I, oh, I'm a little bit split, split on. I think I would rather have that the goal, the 2-2 would have stood in this penalty, was not, would not, not, not have given. I think... Uh, the offside, yes, she was with a foot ahead. I would really be a, a proponent of the daylight rule, so that's why I think I was more willing to let this goal of white stand and not have the penalty. Penalty, um, it's Steph Houghton who steps up after, I think, Paris missed uh, penalties. I think England missed three penalties in this tournament already. So there is a, a penalty curse on them, and it proved to be true again. They get the penalty, and they are saves it. it was not a very well taken shot i think uh if she would not have gone to her natural side the left one but put it to the right it would have been an easy goal but yeah uh, people forget that and so alisa nea holds on to the win and then the us kills the game off as they're very adept doing always running for the corner flag it's a little bit frustrating at times but it's a valid strategy frost did it last year to perfection against Belgium in the semi-final and the English uh, and the English couldn't go anything it got even worse uh, Millie White for a uh, Millie Bright for a pretty bad tackle got a second yellow and was sent off already had an elbow to the face in the first half so yeah it ends 2-1 for the States who now seem primed to really win uh, this title they have eliminated uh, Spain which you could argue is uh, above Sweden or um, the Netherlands. They have eliminated France, they have eliminated England. So uh, it's really hard to not see the States winning the whole thing. Well, that's where you come in. Drop a comment below what you think, uh, how it will go, what you thought about the game. Um, I think it was an enjoyable game. It was a very intense game. You could see uh, many players being completely exhausted when they uh, went off and after the game, so um, that was uh, very interesting to see. Also, was notable that despite um, the stadium, uh, like I think it was 59,000, there were a few empty seats there, which I was a little bit surprised. Hopefully, for the final, it will be all full. I expected a little bit more empty, although you know the Dutch army will be coming. I don't know how many suites are there, so remains to be seen. I think a US-Dutch final would be fun in the sense that those are the two biggest fan groups that are actually in France. But yeah. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel all things my soccer universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.